Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. This video we are going to be discussing first normal form of database normalization. If you're completely new to normalization, be sure to check out the previous video because that's where I give the foundation. Now to put first normal form into very basic, simple English, all we have to do is put our data in tables and don't design the tables like a noob. That's it. So we want to follow the rule of one also known as atomicity. When you start thinking about what kind of data do we want to store inside of a database, you start to separate things into entities and attributes. Even if you don't do this on paper, I know you do it in your mind. You just might not think about it. Entities are things we store data about. Here are a bunch of examples of entities we could have. And attributes are anything we want to store about them. So for example, on the orders, we could say who bought it, what they bought, where they bought it, when did they buy it? <laughs> Why isn't really relevant in this situation or how, but yeah, how could be like credit card, cash, all that stuff. So that is kind of how you separate data. Entities go into tables. Each one of these is going to be their own table. Attributes become columns. So for a specific order inside of that table, we're going to have all of the columns I mentioned. Who bought it, what they bought, that might need to be separated a little bit, but who bought it, what they bought, where they bought it, if there's a store location, the date and time of when they bought it, all of that information becomes a column. But it's important that each attribute is one column and one column describes only one attribute. This here is essentially how we describe atomicity. Every column is indivisible. So that's what atomicity is. I mean, imagine like, atoms, you know those things they try to teach you about in science classes. At one point we thought we couldn't split them. So we come up with the great idea of saying this is all atomic. So that is how that term came to be. So let's kind of go into an orders table and kind of expand it and look at some data that might be inside of that table. Inside of the orders table we could have an order ID and this column is super important when it comes to first normal form. Just like how one thing is described by one column, well, each row needs to point to one individual instance or one individual order. So each row inside of this table is going to be an example of an order, one instance of an order. The way we distinguish orders is using an ID or some kind of primary key. So for first normal form, we need to make sure things are atomic and everything has a primary key. That means every table needs to have a primary key column. In this situation, we're using what's known as a surrogate key, and that's just an ID. It has no real world meaning, it's just for the database's sake. We might also have a customer. Now this is a column that stores one thing. So we would have one customer. So let's say we have a website where you can buy stuff, someone places an order, it might be order of 1,012, with the customer ID of 782. All we are doing is storing one customer. If we look at the value for an individual row, we are storing one customer. These seem kind of like the same thing, but for the column, we could have named it customer, comma, email address. And that just seems so not normal. Like when you try to design tables, I personally don't find it intuitive to break first normal form. It's intuitive to follow first normal form. That's why I said don't design tables like a noob. <laughs> if you have a column, don't try to store a customer ID and an email, because that's two separate things. Obviously, each one's going to need to be put into their own column. Additionally, we don't have customers as the column title. Customers is plural, and that would imply that you could put multiple customer IDs in one row, such as 783 being somebody else. You don't want to do that. So we want to make sure the column header stores one thing, customer, and it only stores one of them. Additionally, an individual row talks about one thing. In this case, one specific order. So if we needed to add another order, we would have to add another row. And if for some reason we had to have two customers for one order, we would add another row. Now, in this situation, you can see there's a problem. That's because we have a repeating primary key, which is not okay. 
So in this situation, you have to break things off into a new table. We'll worry about that in just a moment. That's because I'm just trying to show you guys what it means to follow the rule of one. Everything describes one thing. A table is only talking about orders. Every row talks about one individual order, and every column header talks about one attribute for that order, and every value for that column stores one individual value for that attribute. It's a lot of stuff, but essentially all you gotta think of is do everything singularly. <laughs> you never want to store a set inside of one of these. A set would be like a group of things. So if you're storing a comma something else or a semicolon something else, you're probably breaking first normal form. Now this is just kind of like a rough example. Let's go over a more specific example that's going to require a little bit more explanation. In some of my other videos, I started to talk about this database we're going to work on. And this database is going to be a database for an animal dating website. So your little animals can go on to this website and find their love. <laughs> These actually exist, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> so in our situation, an animal goes on this website and creates an account. So that would be stored inside of a user's table, essentially. We'll call it animals so it's a little bit more clear that this is for an animal dating site. We'll add a couple of different columns in here so you can see what data would look like. So here's our table. We'll have the animal's name, the species of that animal, the color of the animal, and the type of species the animal is interested in. Let's add some data to this. Sally is a bunny. Color is brown. Interested in... Let's go with bunnies just to keep this nice and simple. Now the column I'm going to be focusing on in this example is this one right here. So if we wanted to follow first normal form, we need to make sure that the column header is only storing one thing, interested in, which in this case it is, so we're following that. If we weren't, we could have it interested in, comma, not interested in this. And in that situation, we'd be storing two different types of attributes in one column. And that would be a no-no, you don't want to do that. We're already good with that. We're not trying to store two things in here at once. That being said, we also don't want to design this to expect a set of species that this animal is interested in. So, interested in bunny, semicolon, gerbil. In this situation, we are breaking the rule of one because we're storing two values in an individual field, which is not okay. So how do you notice this early? Well, just be aware if you are doing something like interests, plural, you might be designing your database in the wrong way because you're setting it up to expect a set, meaning multiple values. Interests is plural, so you would expect multiple values for it. So how do we fix this? Well, to start off, let's just add a row. So Sally is interested in bunnies and gerbils. So let's just add a row for another Sally, and then we can get rid of this old one. So this fixes our problem of having two values for a column. Let's put that back to interested in. But now we have the problem that two rows describe the same bunny. Gosh, I stink at drawing. <laughs> Ah, this here is also very bad and you don't want to do this in database design. That's because in this situation it doesn't follow the rule of one. Now in some tables it's okay to have repeating data. For example, if we have a comments table, a user could post 400 comments. That user is going to be inside of that table numerous times. But the table itself is describing comments. So each row would want to describe an individual comment, and we wouldn't want to have two rows describing the same comment. So this always points back to what the table's about. So in this situation, we have two rows describing one animal. That's not okay. To fix this problem now, we actually need another table. So I'm gonna draw some room. <laughs> I'm gonna draw some room, that doesn't even make sense. We will name this table interests. Now it's okay to make a plural in this situation because we're going to be storing multiple rows, so there's going to be multiple interests. But always remember, each row is only one interest. Now we're going to have to be able to refer to a specific animal. And in this situation, there's not a really good way to do it, unless we made the name unique or something, but that's, that's not the best way to do it. That means we need to introduce a primary key. So I'm gonna erase this over here and add a primary key column. And we'll put an X there because we know that's not allowed. The primary key is a way we force that every row talk about only one entity. That's because we can't 
put another one in here because it'd have a different ID. For example, if it said two, it would be a different animal. So let's put that back to an X. So always make a primary key in your tables. Now, inside of this interest table, we can reference that specific animal. So first we could say the animal ID. Then the other column could be this one here. Now the animal ID would be one. The interest would be bunny. Then we could repeat that animal ID, one. And it's okay to repeat it here. That's because this animal ID is not talking about the interest. It's talking about the animal. These here are two separate interests. They just both happen to be from the same animal. So that part's kind of confusing, but just think we can't have repeating interest because that's what the table is about. These interests are going to be distinct because each one is going to have a different animal. So in this one, it'd be gerbil. And you can see that the combination is unique. That's because these as a group do not repeat. One bunny and one gerbil are different. So we're not breaking the rule of one here. Now back in our original table, we're not even going to need this column. And we don't even need to have any way to reference this table. That's because we're essentially designing a one-to-many relationship. And if you go back to our one-to-many video, you'll know that this is the parent table and this is the child table. And when we have that situation, the child is going to have a foreign key pointing to the ID and the parent table is not going to need to know about the child. Now, what about this row? Obviously, we're not even going to need that row, so we can just get rid of it. So if we had to clean this up, which I guess I will, <sighs> get rid of this column and get rid of this row. And the last thing when you're working on first normal form, make sure each column is actually about whatever you're trying to describe. These all depend on the primary key. But you wouldn't want something in here like the weather, okay? The weather has nothing to do with the animal. <laughs> so in this situation, this is not dependent on the key and we always want every single column to depend upon the key. Now, all of that was a lot of information. So don't get overwhelmed. All you have to remember is to follow the rule of one. When you're designing a table, just do it intuitively. Make things as singular as possible. Make each row describe an individual entity. And in the end, you'll be good. Don't worry about it. Because once you get to second normal form and third normal form, that's going to take your crappy database and slaughter it. <sighs> and then you're gonna have something a little bit better. <laughs> Thanks guys. If you like this video, please give it a like and I will see you in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, please. Holy crap, that was a long one.